All right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, part two of this uh, album. And the only one I, I know between, we did Between the Wheels, yeah, not that long ago, but the live version. So I'm quite looking forward to hearing that. But other than that, I don't, none of these names jump out at me as songs we've done. But yeah, The Body Electric. Let's go.
Yeah, there was so much in that. So much in that. Again, you can hear how on stage that would rock. But actually, again, like it's, I was thinking it's kind of like, get these vocals is like, uh, like it's like a folk. It's kind of like a Jeff Toll from the future, or like a folk from the future. With when Geddy does it, I don't know. Geddy's just got this kind of. To me, it is like he's come back in time from like a thousand years. His melody, maybe as well, it could be his voice, too. But yeah. Again, another song that you can feel how that would rock. Um, yeah, live. Because it does feel, I don't know what, it's like it's just a couple of, like, um, the one we did that we done on the first side, the first track, I think it was. And you feel it's just a little bit slower. And you, when you hit, like, this song rocked. But it also didn't. Like, it was weird. But then, great. Solo. This is exactly what I'm... As well, this is a good, great example of Neil Pitt's... Um, uh, the... The drumming kind of melod like melody to his drum. Uh, drum parts. This was a perfect example of that. Right. Like, from flicking between the two different basically notes even though it's drums really he's hitting two different notes but yeah you had this is exactly what i mean with rush you had alex's kind of solo start for a couple of bars then getty's bass went insane and then neil went insane like they just don't give you any chance to listen to everything. Do you know what I mean? At the same, like they don't give you a chance to. Like it's literally impossible. But yeah, absolute tune again. To be fair, uh, yeah, kid gloves. This one is. Yeah. All right, let's go. So I knew there was something crawling on me. That's why.
that's a tune that went just about everywhere is it me or as well does side two seem to be a a lot more guitar the guitar at the front maybe i just didn't pick that up in the first side but it does seem to be more like because it felt more like the synth side was more driving the melody but this side both songs on this side seem yeah very more that the guitar is the pro even though like do you know what I mean Addicts is obviously doing like effects things and but that solo was fire that solo was fire it reminded me like I think Alex went a, it was make it just made me think Alex can do like anything because a little bit in there reminded me of like an audio slave solo where audio slave the the sounds that he makes that guitar it be, it becomes like the guitar is not the guitar anymore but it's it's just it becomes just a sound that it, and it's with audio slave solos it's like the guitar triggers parts of the music and it is all bouncing off the solo instead of just the solo going over the top there was a bit of that in there but then it also towards the end of that solo i swear i heard some kind of chuck berry double note very old school style lead but that's what again it they don't give you enough to really sink your teeth into anything and that's how it becomes to sound like rush there's so much you can hear there's so, there's so much in this tune different like but it's it's like it's like rush but it's seasoned it's seasoned with multiple it's it's where like you have people that have a heavy jazz influence heavy blues body body blah, blah, blah. It's like with Rush, they sound like Rush, but yeah, it's just nicely seasoned with enough of a transparency to their influences that you can pick it up, but not enough to really say they got this from there or whatever. But yeah, no, that's another fire tune. Another fire tune. And so original as well, because like I say again, it rocks. It's got that tempo, but it's it doesn't rock. But it rocks. But it doesn't rock. But it does rock. It's yeah. But yeah, we're going to the next one. Red lenses. Again, that name does not sound familiar to me, so this is like as far as I can remember. I don't know this tune at all, so yeah, let's go. I see red.
I need to see a live of that. That's a tune. And I, it, it makes me think, right, if there's any song I've heard that makes me think Rush was influenced by Frank Zappa, is this one, with the little z- kind of xylophone sounding thing. But just like, right, this is exactly what I've been saying throughout the whole album, to be fair. This did rock. Like, this was more kind of true but it still wasn't do you know what I mean but it was kind of more what kind of you'd expect from a rock band up until a point really it was that bass line and that was a tasty bass line but it was the like the little interlude bits where it just kind of I don't even know what that was it was so kind of surreal, and yeah, but that was fire, and how Geddy as well, Geddy on this, was it me, or did Ged- Geddy was like, almost, what's it, Paul Rogers from Free and Bad Company, there was a couple of, not like how he sung the whole thing, just little moments where he was kind of, if you've listened to Paul Rogers, you know there's them little kind of things he does. Um, it felt like Geddy was kind of doing a little nod to him almost. Because Geddy, you, you know what Geddy sings like. He'd like, yeah, I don't know, maybe. But that was a tune, and yeah, they all smashed that. Like, Neil was on fire, Geddy's on fire, 
Alex, they're all on fire on that. Yeah, that's a tune I want to hear because, like I say, with Rush, you, now that we've done such like a lot, a, a lot more Rush live, you can just hear that kind of. You can hear it, and just feel yeah, that would be fire to see him do that because that was mad. That was a mad tune, like structurally everything that was very very unusual tune but absolute fire yeah but yeah hold on we'll carry on on two seconds yeah let's finish it beyond the will i'm looking forward to this one yeah this is a tune but this is a tune but i can't actually remember like everything do you know what i mean and also i haven't heard the actual studio version yet so yeah let's go
Well, yeah, I do feel like, um, yeah, this album, because that rocks. That rocks. It's like that is so epic and evil sounding. But that, like, it does feel this album a bit like the opposite way around to the Queen album we did last week, where Queen, like, I suppose it's kind of they're probably not far off the same time of being released the two al- this album and that album, and it does seem like kind of side one Queen gave to their old fans that want to hear them rock because that side rocks. But then the second half was a bit more kind of 80s experimenting in that kind of field. Whereas this seemed like the other way around. This seemed like the more this album went on, the more it become guitar and more rocky. But yeah, great album. Great album. Yeah. Alex turned up. I, that's the thing. I don't remember really... Bigging Alex up in the first part a great deal. But yeah, he without a doubt came through on this side. Jeez, some of the stuff, but not musically, this like the changes and the like the different the variation of genres and instruments and Everything, do you know what I mean? And also, it's kind of a ballsy album as well, because like I say, it's not a um, it's not your archetypical rock band album, but yeah, it's kind of got that. Yeah, it's it's like it's got the attitude, <laughs> I suppose. But yeah, I thought this was a fire album and. Especially seeing as it's the same with Queen doing Queen is that I'm kind of musically listening to this like era, like the eighties. Recently, the eighties has become a lot more. Um, I've become a lot more into that. So hearing these types of albums and seeing where both bands has kind of come from to ending up, and hearing the difference between these and others. But yeah, yeah, that's the thing as well. I can't remember whether, because Geddy Lee in his book, he gives nod, a nod to kind of a, a, a lot of people in that book. But I can't remember him talking about Frank Zappa. Maybe he did. But I can't off the top of my head actually remember. But there was a few things in here which I thought was, yeah, Zappa-esque. But definitely of that Zappa, yes. All of them. But I also think from hearing Geddy's book and hearing what people kind of said about Rush, I suppose critics, and really, who cares about critics? Critics are really irrelevant. Everybody can be a critic nowadays. I was, back in the day, it was a bit more like people actually listened to them. But, the yeah. Uh, and Geddy like, talks about how people kind of pretty much always, like the critics always kind of slated them. But now they're the same type of people that would say Rush is one of the greatest bands of all time. But, yeah. Yeah. No, I thought this was fine. I thought that last tune is a perfect way to end off this album. Like, and it does, it does seem to me that just little bit by little bit, the album got more rock and more guitar based. But, yeah. Yeah. Absolute fire. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet. <laughs>